Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. Well, actually, today it's WRWG775. And that's because we're going to be doing some GMRS work today. In particular, we're going to turn my old Chevy Suburban into a mobile ad hoc repeater. We're going to use the Redivis RT97L repeater. We're going to put it in here with the Redivis MB09 antenna sticking out of the sunroof. And we're going to go park this thing up on top of a hill and see what kind of a range we can get with some GMRS handhelds. Now, before I get started, I'll let you know a couple of things. First, I've already made an overview and demo video on this repeater. You can check that out at the link below. Also, I wanna let you know that there's an affiliate link in the video description where you can go and learn more about this repeater directly from Redivis. There's also a discount code down there. So if you wanna buy one of these, you can save some money with that discount code. Having said that, the first thing I want to show you is the MB09 antenna that comes with this repeater kit. I wasn't able to show this in the overview video because UPS had damaged the original package that Redivis had sent me and the antenna wasn't in it. So let's start off by taking a closer look at this antenna and seeing what that's all about. Obviously, I've already unboxed this antenna and actually set it up. I've partially disassembled it so you can see everything that's included with it. The first thing I wanna show you is the mounting tube. This is made from aluminum and fits on the bottom of the antenna after you've connected the coax. Then you can see these two aluminum mounting brackets with stainless steel hardware just slip over the mounting tube. And then there's a clamp screw here that you tighten up once you get everything set where you want. And then of course these clamps fit over your antenna mast and clamp the whole assembly to it. The base of the antenna is chrome plated and there's an SO239 at the bottom. And then like I said, the mounting tube slips over here once you get the coax mounted on. Now there are three radials. I've got two installed here. And the last one I'll show you just threads in to the base. And then there's a lock nut here to tighten everything up once you get it set where you want. Now the radiating element is contained inside this fiberglass tube that is coated with PVC. And then of course there is one brass fitting in the middle where the bottom and top screw together. And then at the very top of the antenna is a weather cap to keep moisture out of the radiating element. Along with the antenna, Redivis also supplied 15 meters or 49 feet of RG213 coax. Now you can see this stuff is fairly flexible for its diameter and looks to be like it's pretty good quality coax. We also have pretty decent PL259 connectors on either end. Now these connectors do appear to be weatherproof out of the box. However, if you're gonna set one of these up permanently, it's always a good idea to add an extra layer of weatherproofing through coax seal or some other kind of tape to keep moisture out of the coax. To attach the coax to the antenna, I first have to pass it through the mounting tube, and then I can screw it on to the SO239 at the base of the antenna. Now I'm gonna slide the mounting tube over the base of the antenna, and I'm gonna align this hole in the mounting tube with this threaded hole in the base of the antenna. Now I'll bring in the supplied set screw and I'll put that in place. Now I'll just snug this up with an eight millimeter wrench. While I'm here, I'm gonna snug up these mounting brackets so they stop moving around on me. As I mentioned earlier in the video, my plan was to set the repeater up at a local high point. So I drove up to the top of Bald Hill in Tolland, Connecticut. You can see the summit is accessible right here from Bald Hill Road. And this area right here happens to be a town owned conservation area with a nice parking area where I was able to set up my car and set the repeater up inside. My sister and brother-in-law set up at the local supermarket. This is the Big Y in Tolland, Connecticut. Now you can see from the topo map here, the elevation at this point is somewhere around 570 feet roughly. Now you can see from this dotted line that I'm set up over here, actually in Vernon, Connecticut, just over the Tolland town line, which is right here at the Rockville United Methodist Church. And you can see my elevation was around 540 feet at the church. Looking at the measurement line, you can see that these two points are roughly four miles apart. You can also see from the topographic map that there are some hills in the way. This is actually a fairly prominent ridge line here in Eastern Connecticut. And elevations are getting up into the 870 feet range at one point, but definitely a challenge for two handheld radios to communicate point to point on UHF frequencies across this four mile distance. So what we're hoping 
is that we can use the repeater up on the hilltop, which we should both have a clear shot to, to communicate reliably back and forth between each other. This is Dwayne and this is Lori, the, my brother-in-law and my sister. They're gonna help me test this repeater. We're up here at Bald Hill in Tolland, Connecticut. Now this is a great place because we're at about a thousand feet or so elevation, maybe a little under that. And this is a town of Tolland public trail. So I don't have any worries about parking my Suburban with a big funny looking antenna sticking out of it up here in the middle of the woods in a public area. Nobody should bother it. Let me give you a quick look at how the repeater is set up and then we're gonna spread out and see if we can do a good test with this. So here's the repeater itself. This is the Redivis RT97L. Now by spec, it's rated at 22 watts output. I measured it on a mine meter and I'm getting 20 watts, whatever that's worth. Anyway, you can see I've got it connected up to this power station and I'm running it through the normal AC power brick. What I found is if I run it directly through the 12 volt output, I actually get less power output. I'm getting around 15 watts or so. So I figured I would just run it this way and get as much power out of this as we can. Although the difference between 15 and 20 isn't really gonna make or break this test. I'll show you the antenna itself in a minute, but I've connected up to 49 feet of RG213, which is included with this repeater kit from Redivis. You can see a good portion of it is coiled up back there. And then I've got it just going up through a military mast through the sunroof. So there's the military mast just kind of jammed in my center console. And I've got the sunroof just kind of holding it in place. And we've got about three sections there. So it's about 12 feet high. And you can see we're right up there, not touching any branches or in the trees or anything like that. So what we're going to do now that this is active and the car's all locked up, we're going to go to different locations on the other side of town, on the other side of Bald Hill, and see if we can communicate. Now, I'm 100% positive that we're not going to be able to communicate radio to radio directly. We're going to need to go through the repeater to do that, and that's what we're trying to demonstrate in this test today. But just to show you what we're using for radios, I've got two of these bow fangs that I just picked up. These are GM, what are they? GM5RH. So these are legitimate, or at least I think they're legitimate, GMRS radios that I picked up on Amazon just for this test. They were actually on sale. I got two for $18. So I'm not sure how well they're going to work, but they should work well enough for this test. Now, we've also got one of these Waxen uh, KG905Gs. These are supposed to be pretty good radios. This is a heterodyne receiver. So if something goes wrong with the bow fang, then we're going to use the Waxen and see how everything works. Hello, we are at the Big Y parking lot in Tolland, Connecticut, and in a few minutes, my brother will be at his destination and we're going to see if we can reach the repeater on which is in his vehicle parked at Bald Hill in Tolland. We are at elevation of roughly 570 feet. Yes, we can hear you and I'm uh, recording as well. And we're here at Big Y and you're at the church. What's it called? I forgot. This is the Rockville United Methodist Church yes i remember where that is i just couldn't think of the the name of the actual name of the church but yes i know very well where it is I had to come a little further away in order to get it. I guess the terrain wasn't the way. Well, also, well, I guess the repeater is working. That's, uh, that's good to know. For the first initial test, looks like it's working. WRWG 775, clear. So now we figured out we can communicate through the repeater. And we're going to do a simplex test. Well, let's switch over to channel 1 and uh, try to communicate directly for, I don't know, 5 or 6 miles apart on the opposite. Side of the hill, but just for the purposes of demonstration, we'll give it a shot. Okay, I'm going to switch over to channel one now. I'll give you a couple calls. You can give me a couple calls, and if we don't hear each other in, I don't know, a couple of minutes, we'll head back over here to the repeater. WRWG775. Okay, I'm switched over to channel one, and we'll see if you can hear me. Uh, you're, you're uh, perfectly 
clear on channel one. Okay, I'm hearing you, but it's real scratchy. Uh, Yeah, it's a little scratchy depending on which way I was turning. Um, I You came in staticky and then when I turned in the direction towards the repeater, you were much clearer. And when I turned towards the store, uh, you're much more uh, clearer. Uh, so that's how much we heard each other, but not real well. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's wrap up the test. Um, do you want me to come meet you at Big Y or do you want to meet back at my house? We'll just head over to your house so then we can bring you back to your repeater. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you guys at the house in a little while. Any time. Okay, see you shortly. WRWG775, clear. I'm over here at the Rockville United Methodist Church, actually in Vernon, Connecticut, all of the Tallinn Town Line. The western Tallinn town line is not too far from where I'm standing and I'm still able to hit the repeater. Let's see if I can communicate with Dwayne and Lori from here on the Baofeng HT. Okay, uh, unit one, this is unit two. <laughs> I don't know what to use for identifiers. Uh, are you guys able to hear me on the HT? I'm over here at uh, the Rockville Church. Yes, we can hear you and I'm uh, recording as well. Um, I hear you loud and clear, and we're here at Big Y, and you're at the church, what's it called, I forgot. This is the Rockville United Methodist Church at the corner of Route 30 and Route 31, Lafayette Corner or Lafayette Square, I think is what they call it, northeast part of Vernon. Yes, I remember where that is, I just couldn't think of the, the name of, the actual name of the church, but yes, I know very well where it is. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's funny, when I was closer, uh, I was trying to uh, key up the repeater. I was trying Star Hill, the, the uh, athletic complex, and I tried the car wash area, and I couldn't get into it, but I had to come a little further away in order to get it. I guess the terrain was in the way. Yes, you're coming in very, very good, loud and clear. Okay, awesome. Well, I guess the repeater is working. That's, uh, that's good to know. So now that we figured out we can communicate through the repeater. We're gonna do a simplex test. Well, let's switch over to channel one and uh, try to communicate directly. We're, I don't know, five or six miles apart and on the opposite side of the hill, but just for the purposes of demonstration, we'll give it a shot. Okay, let's try channel one. Uh, Laurie or Dwayne, can you hear me on channel one? Okay, I'm barely hearing you on channel one now, uh, almost non-existent. But there is a signal there, but I really can't copy it. Are you able to hear me? Okay, I'm hearing you, but it's real scratchy, uh, direct. I'm surprised we're connecting at all direct, but, uh, but it looks like we can hear each other a little bit, but it's better through the repeater this time. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's wrap up the test. Um, do you want me to come meet you at Big Y, or do you want to meet back at my house? Just head over to your house, so then we can bring you back to your repeater. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you guys at the house in a little while. WRWG 775. Okay, so we had our... Is that running? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is it running? Okay. So it was, a, it was a little interesting for me on that side of the hill, because I had to get further away than I thought I would, to be able to get the repeater clearly, but I was able to get it in the in the church parking lot over there. You guys didn't have any trouble at Big Y, right? It was no, pretty no, good. It was, it was coming on, in good on the east deal. side of the hill. Yes. And then I was a little confused by the simplex test. I'll have to sort that out later. I mean, on the second try, we definitely heard each other scratchy, and I'm surprised we heard each other at all. But it was definitely better through the repeater, so it it did its job. And then just for reference. You can see we still are at 100% power, even though we've been kind of using this on and off for the last two hours or so or whatever it's been. So it did pretty good power-wise. Oh, it was a good um, test. And acting more like a repeater 
when we got further away. Yeah, it was an interesting test. It was fun Very to good. to try out. And yeah, it was something different to learn about more about ham radio. Yeah, well, and this is you know something cool. You can set it up at an event, like if you had a cert team or something like that that had an event in town, they could put something like this up on a high spot and yep. use it to extend range, that kind of a thing or, or whatever. But uh, unfortunately where we live, it's not quite as high. I can set this up at home, but we only get a couple of miles of range because of the hills around us. But, uh, but either way, yeah, an interesting test. So thanks for helping out. I appreciate, you know, you being around and willing to drive me around and back and forth and all of that no, stuff. Fine. All right, let's break this thing down and uh, you got it, man. <laughs> Let's break the repeater down and uh, get out of here. If you're interested in learning more about the Redivis RT97L repeater system that I featured in today's video, I will, of course, have an affiliate link down in the video description. And I'll have discount codes down there as well if they're available so that you can save a few dollars on your purchase should you decide to go that route. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. 7-3, and thanks for watching.